Hi everyone and welcome to the first ever Wool and Witch podcast. Uh, I am coming to you from my office in Bristol. Um, I am getting distracted by my cat destroying my plants. No! Okay, we'll get, we're going to do this together. Uh, my name is Steph and I run Wool & Witch, which is an independent yarn and fibre dyeing business in Bristol. This, this is Moggit. She's a year old and she destroys everything. So I'm going to have to try and keep her, either chuck her out the room or pin her to me before she destroys my plants and everything in my office. Everything. Mmm, joys. This is what I want to start my first podcast. <laughs> Okay, Mog. Out you go. Start again. Straight, straighten you guys up. You don't want to be on the wonk. No, no, no. Oh, God, how do you start these things? Hi, everyone, and welcome to the first ever Wool and Witch podcast. Um, my name is Steph and I run Wool & Witch, which is an independent yarn and fibre dyeing business in Bristol. And I thought I'd start doing my own little knitting, spinning fibre podcast thing. Um, so I've been watching a lot of podcasts on YouTube, watching them and listening to them whilst I'm knitting and spinning and things. And I thought it'd be kind of cool to get in on the action and start doing my own as well. Um, I'm gonna be throwing my hands about everywhere because I'm nervous and that's what I do. So as I said I run a yarn and fibre dyeing business in Bristol. Uh, it's pretty new. I started it maybe October last year and I was really hoping it would go really well this year and then uh, everything locked down and turned to crap. So it's not as gone as well as I'd hoped, but I'm really enjoying becoming part of the community and things. Okay, so I'm not an, and I'm swiveling. Stop with that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to go through all the topics and things I want to talk about in podcasts, so I'm just going to jump straight in. Um, I have attempted to learn to knit quite a few times over the years. Uh, the first time ended in many arguments with my nan and her calling me cat handed This was when I was about eight years old. Um, so back then I was really left-handed. I could barely use my right hand. Uh, I really struggled. Um, but over the years I've slowly become slightly more ambidextrous. So I can actually use scissors now with my right hand, which is always lovely because cutting paper with right-handed scissors in your left hand is not great. It's not fun. No, no. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, about two two years ago, I think, um, myself and my partner went to Leeds for a weekend away, and there is an art shop there called I think it's called Fred Aldous, and they had some wool in the gang. Basically, knit kits. Um, and I picked up a snood, like knit your own snood kit, uh, and I thought, hey, give it a go, sit in the hotel room, cast it on, give it a go again. I don't know what brought about the sudden need to, but I felt like, I felt like giving it a go again. Um, and actually, it went really well. I really enjoyed just sitting there quietly and knitting. Uh, by the time we'd got back to Bristol, uh, on the car ride home, I managed to knit myself a nice little snood. Uh, so that was this one. That was about two two years ago. So it's lovely, soft, if it decides to focus, there we go, soft, super chunky yarn. Um, the pattern's all right. I find this twist bit kind of uncomfortable and annoying to wear. Um, so from that I decided to uh, knit myself another one slightly different I changed the pattern slightly differently as I was going along and then 
I came up with this one. So I still had a little bit of the yarn left over from the kit. Not a lot, enough to do sort of half a snood. And then I had some hand dyed, hand spun, sort of thick and thin chunky yarn that I spun myself. Um, so about 10 years ago, back at university, I taught myself to spin yarn from a project I was uh, doing at university. So I studied uh, drawing and applied art at uni, which is basically the slightly more craftier side of art. And uh, during the project it was to do with uh, generation lost. So I took that to mean like the skills and the crafts uh, throughout the generations being lost and not being passed down. Uh, one of those was knitting. But of course, I tried it, didn't work, so instead I kind of sidestepped over to teach myself to spin yarn. And I really enjoyed it, and over the last sort of 10 years or so, I've still been spinning. But I've had all of this yarn, and n nothing to do with it because I couldn't knit. Um, so because of the snood and the very successfulness of the snood, I decided to mix the two together and actually use some of my yarn that I've had sat in my stash for ages. Um, uh, so this one was changed up, it didn't have the the twist in it, I just sewed it together as it was, but as I was going round I was, I don't know if you can see, I sort of increased it in the middle. It, I found it wasn't quite wide enough to sit comfortably on my neck and to cover kind of my the back of my neck with t-shirts and things so I decided to widen it out I'll pop it on and show you so this one is nice and tall but the way it I increased the rows it meant that you could still fold it over and you get the double thickness but it would still kind of lay flat as well um, so underneath t-shirts and things I didn't have a cold neck which I quite liked um, and then because I loved knitting these so much, I then, basically everyone that Christmas got a snood. Yeah, I, ha I haven't actually seen anyone wear the snoods that I knitted for them. But I enjoyed making them, I'm sure that's the, the main part, right, of giving handmade gifts. I enjoyed making them, I gave them to them. They did not wear them. I don't care, I enjoyed making them. Um, and then from that, I got kind of caught the bug on knitting, I really enjoyed it. Uh, so I decided to challenge myself from there and kind of stepped up the game and went into knitting in the round uh, and went to the next part. I mean, if you've got a scarf, the next logical step is a hat. So I knitted a few of these ones, these are just they're just simple ones that I changed colour halfway through. So these weren't hand spun or anything, they're just standard uh, like commercial yarn that I bought from Lovecraft. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a simple nice little pattern but it meant that I was just still learning different techniques so I learnt to like knit in around on this one and then actually decrease like the rows as I was going up which was quite nice and it's a really comfortable hat. I really like it anyway, I still wear it. Um, and then this year I turned 30 in June and I set myself the challenge to knit myself uh, an actual full garment rather than accessories. Um, I wanted to stay with the kind of slightly chunkier yarn so I went with some super chunky and uh, I managed to find a designer called Lauren Aston, I think. Uh, and basically every design that she does is in super chunky. I wanted to keep it um, in that yarn weight because it, it's just a lot quicker to knit with. Uh, it's a lot easier to see what you're doing, especially as a novice knitter still. And I didn't want to knit it in fingering and, and double knit because I felt like if I messed up I'd really mess up. So I thought super chunky. I found this sweater design and I was like yes I need to knit it so that's what I've done um, and I, I'm still pretty proud of it. It's my first proper one and it's got cables so that was that was another 
added bits to try and teach myself as I was going along. So with this one I used some more hand dyed, like personal hand dyed yarn and that's this one here. Uh, so there's, there's a cable running down through the front of it and there's also um, some cable designs down the back. Um, this is a nice cropped style jumper. I will insert I will insert a video of me actually wearing it because it's easier to see. Uh, but I'm really chuffed with it and I, I've hand dyed all of this up myself. So I had some um, super chunky just undyed laying around so I uh, dyed myself up some enough to actually make a sweater. I'm actually really chuffed with what I was what I'd done. I mean it's there's mistakes running through it, don't get me wrong, but I managed to get it done and I managed to get it done before my 30th birthday so I was so impressed with myself. I was like beaming happy smiley for the next like two weeks and then I was like okay what do I do next? And then I started about eight different projects and I have yet to finish any of them I think. I am a serial project starter. I can't seem to find the effort to finish any of them yet. But then life gets in the way. Pandemics get in the way. Oh, this year is just great, right? So I guess let's go through work in progress, right? Let's do the whips. Um, what one to start with? Um, ah, I guess I start with the first one that I picked up, uh, which is another wool in the gang. So I thought, hey, my first wool in the gang one went so well. Let's try another one. And this is the I still got it in the packet. This is this is how bad it's getting. Um, I got the Love Thing sweater. Don't know if you can. Let's. So this is the the Love Thing sweater. I thought it would be nice and easy. My computer disagrees. I disagree. Um, I have started and restarted and frogged it and then restarted again and then uh, so many times. It's an, it's an inksy designed pattern and it's not that difficult but I don't know what it is about this pattern. I just, I am struggling and because I've struggled for so long with it I've just not picked it back up for the last like five six months now um that is how far I've gotten mm -hmm. this is so successful I yeah it's supposed to be a fucking swear it's just it's just yeah I'm not a lover of the like I think it's 100% tensile yarn the, I, I've realized that I enjoy knitting with something that's got a little bit of give in it and because it's it's basically 100% tensile sort of nylon stuff there's no give in it and I just can't get on with it at all so that one's kind of just been sat there I will eventually fin finish it but I have other projects I'm finding a lot more fun to knit with so that's kind of gone on the back burner for now. Uh, next whip, so the next work in progress I've got is actually a shawl pattern by Caitlin Hunter. Uh, I'm gonna attempt to pronounce the name, it's not gonna go right because pronunciations don't work very well for me. Um, Tiroldigo? Tiroldigo? That's, that's how it's spelt. There we go. That's how it's spelt. And that's what it should look like. Uh, I'm really enjoying knitting it. I've, I'm trying to do projects where I can learn like a new technique through it. Um, trying to do techniques on just like a swatch gauge and stuff I just find really boring and I just, I get bored halfway through doing it and then just put it to one side. Whereas if I try and do it in a project 
I feel a bit more motivated to do it because I've got to finish the project. Um, so with this shawl pattern, I've been essentially teaching myself lace work, but also colour work as well. Um, so, so far, I have kind of a little mini triangle pattern thing going on. Um, I've been using my own like personal hand dyed stuff, so these are actually available in my, my shop. Um, so, just have a try and get the camera to focus on it. That'd be the next thing. There we go. Uh, so, I started off in this sort of purple colour, which is called Ruby Falls. Um, so, it's like purples, and there's some like reds and stuff going through it. And then into this sort of creamy paler striped one so there's there's pinks and reds and like greys um which worked really well and then i've gone into this brand new colorway which i'm releasing this weekend which is called karen m uh, which is inspired by sarah j mass's book throne of glass it's such a good book series if you haven't read it i really recommend it and it's a nice easy read as well uh because it's a young adult series but it's so good so good you get obsessed by it i swear um so i had to i had to do a colorway kind of inspired by it and then i've gone up into my first bit of color work so this bit along here is the, the new section i've had to put myself a lifeline in because i've uh, keep getting it wrong and having to frog back and it's just a lot easier if i put a lifeline in and um you can kind of see the difference not really not as much there's not as much contrast in colors as i'd like uh but i'm carrying on with it anyway um i'm about halfway through the color work section i'm enjoying it but uh, it does get a little bit confusing um does get a little bit confusing with all the floats running on the back but that's color work i guess um I've had to start it a few times just because I get confused, uh, especially with like yarn over and then switching the colours and, and everything, but I'm getting the hang of it. Um, I think I've pretty much got understood it now. I feel a bit more confident with colour work. I'm really enjoying this pattern. Um, I just, I don't know, it's, it's looking really pretty. I think it should make a really nice shawl at the end of it that I will actually, actually wear which is nice it's what you want when you're spending hours knitting actually use the project at the end um i have my progress keeper on it so that one it started here two days ago so i've i've knitted a lot and then i've had to frog it because it's gone slightly wrong um and i've started again but there's that one um and if you're interested the stitch marker i've got on it camera focus yes the stitch marker i have on it is actually one that i make um that will also be released along with this new colorway this weekend um i'm selling them in a pack of four i'll show you basically a quick rundown of everything that's going in the shop update at the end of the video uh, but this is one of the stitch markers that will be available um and they've all been hand drawn by myself and then laser cut uh, by a fantastic UK company um, so they've done that and I'm keeping all of this in my one of my project bags uh, these are I think they're I think it's Bianca yarns I will leave a link to um, where I got the project bag from at the end of the video uh, and then my next whip is something I'm <laughs> I'm pretty I'm pretty chuffed by pretty excited to do I feel like a proper knitter with it um, and that is a sock pattern so I every time I followed a, a, a knitting vlogger or someone on Instagram that's also knits they've just got socks everywhere they're constantly knitting socks and I felt a bit left out so I decided to cast on a sock uh, this is the first ever sock I've made. It's not, obviously, it's still on the needle, so it's not completely finished yet. 
um, but I've turned the heel and I was pretty chuffed with myself for that one. Uh, I'm following a video by the Crazy Sock Lady on YouTube, which I will leave a link in the description. Um, <laughs> and it's going really well. Uh, I've realised that I'm a very tight knitter. Um, I turned the heel and then tried on the uh, the sock, on the still on the needles, and it's very tight. There's not a lot of give in it. Um, I I'm trying to, as I'm going down through the chair, I'm trying to loosen up a bit and then I hope that when I block it, it sort of even out some of the stitches and maybe loosen it off. But I th this is only the first sock though, so I'm hoping the, 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 the sister sock, when I get round to knitting it, will be a lot looser and a lot better. But I mean, this is the first one, first attempt, it's going pretty well. Um, turning the heel was definitely an experience. Um, I struggled with a little bit but the instructions on the video are amazing and I've oh, oh, I'm really enjoying it it's been great just sitting down in front of the TV and just whacking out a few rows and then it it just coming along in front of my eyes like this is the thing with all the big projects they they take so long that it you can't really see what's going on until they're like finished there is this this is just jumping ahead. I didn't start this too long ago. I mean, look at the the progress keeper was on before the. I put the progress keeper on last week, and I've already turned the heel and got like halfway down through the foot. So I'm doing well. I'm really enjoying it. So the 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 yarn from this one was from Harbour Crochet, and I believe she's changed her name to the Indie Yarn Club now. Um, she used to sell crochet sock kits, uh, which I bought, but I really struggled to understand crochet again. I haven't done it for years and years, um, so I thought, screw it, I'm still going to use the yarn, I will knit with it instead. Um, so, I don't know if you can see, there we go. It's this gorgeous like pinks with blues and reds and some like white patches running through it, along with like contrasting heel and cuff which is in like neon yellow I think they're gonna be an awesome pair of socks once I finish them I'm hoping this one will be finished by sort of the end of the week and then I can start on the next one and actually get them done um, you'll notice my progress keeper is another um, one let's do it the right way uh, is another one of my designs on there so that's quite cool. Um, I have a few other projects but I don't have them in front of me and to be honest I like cast them on and I haven't done any rows so I'm not really, there's no point showing you them. No point at all. Um, with the whole knitting thing um, I've kind of gone on one track down with loads of knitting so I haven't really been spinning anything recently. Um, I have stuff still on the bobbin that I need to ply up but I just haven't got round to like plying it so that might be in next time's podcast. Uh, what else to share? I've done finished objects, I've done whips, maybe it's the shop update stuff. Let's do that. Um, so this weekend I'm doing a massive shop update so that'll be the 5th of September my shop will be updated. Uh, I will have brand new colourways, restocks of uh, other yarns, project bags, stitch markers, there's gonna be a whole host of things and then uh, at 9 o'clock Saturday morning I will be doing a live chat basically giving you an even closer look and you can ask me about colour combinations and just any questions or just come along for a chit chat. Um, so I'm quite so excited for that because it's my first time going live. Lots of firsts this week. I am basically overstressing myself. There we go, we'll do all that. Um, so, new colourways. Fun times. Um, I will show you some of these. So the first one is the Karen M ones which is the ones that I was just knitting for my shawl pattern. Um, I will have these on uh, all of my bases so it'll be on my four ply sock base DK and then super chunky 
that is currently drying currently for now i've got the dk and the sock um so with these ones they've got a lovely bit of like maroony purpley red at the end which fades into white and then into speckles so with the speckles there's bits of blues and browns and golds and then some reds as well which shown up a lot deeper on the sock yarn than on the double knit oh there you go uh, but these are just gorgeous gorgeous yarns i think these are quickly becoming some of my favorite colors to work with uh, so that's the first one going in and then and then I've got these ones I haven't named these ones yet I'm thinking maybe scarab beetle or something um, so these are quite focus uh, so there's greens and blues and purples and like some darker purples and darker greens and things running through these I think these will work really lovely in like a sweater um, and again these will be available on all of my bases over the weekend um, uh, I will also have uh, amethyst available on sock which I haven't released yet um, there we go might be easier with another one there we go um, so again these are available on all of my bases they go from a really lovely silver grey into purples uh, so they, they just make a really nice colour combination and then one of my favourite new ones that I've come up with which I think I'm, I was planning on calling Coleman's but I got so many messages through Instagram asking me when I was dyeing them if they were spilt noodles that I might just call them spilt noodles um, and they are kind of a mustardy yellow so there's bits of, of slightly darker browny orangey bits along with some yellow there's like orange speckles and I think these will work really nicely with a few of my other colourways as well and again available on all my bases um, and then, because I haven't actually released it yet, um, my, this is a, currently only, a bit, will be only available on Super Chunky, I'm thinking it might be Stone Wash or Storm Clouds or something I might call it, and this is like whites and greys and like dark black speckles, um, and this is the colourway that my sweater and jumper was knitted out of so this one knits up like this one so I thought that's quite nice that I've got a sample already pre-made up uh, so that's my brand new colorways and then I've got my stitch markers available um, and I've got two different sets I've got my like OG original set which will be available throughout the entire from from basically from the weekend on continuously um, and then I have got a Christmas only set um, so first set the OG set uh, is this one here there we go and you get like a moss you get my logo and then you get two different sort of rose designs as well so, and, the moss. and they are available on both bulb pins but also these like uh, locking clasps style so you can fit, still fit your needles and things through them um, but they're slightly easier to work with than bulb pins I find and then the Christmas set which will be available for this weekend then it would be um, unavailable again until uh, November so basically this weekend is the only time you can get these early for Christmas presents if you want to get yourself sorted and 
at these, these four designs. So again, so again, you get the logo, you get some mistletoe, uh, you get some like mountain range, and my personal favourite, you get a little deer, little deer with a heart on its butt. It's my favourite. Um, yeah, and so they will be exclusive for this weekend until general release in November. So they're they're like extra extra special. Um, all of them have been hand drawn by me and then uh, laser cut in the UK. Uh, so they're they're pretty close to my heart because I spent hours drawing them all out. So I'm hoping you guys like them. And then I have got project bags, which I don't have next to me because I'm unorganised. <sighs> Right, I've got five different designs of fabric um, and then two different sizes. So, so I've got a large available which obviously fits things like your sweaters and, and everything in. So it fits about like six, six skeins in, I reckon. Probably that and your project. Um, and each of them have uh, like an internal pocket. They've all got flat bases so they all stand up um, and they've all got gorgeous gorgeous fabric so that's this one it's kind of woodlandy with like little foxes and birds and things which i thought was cute so that's the large and then i've got smaller ones as well which fits perfect size for like sock patterns so they're all drawstring as well so they've all been hand sewn by me which is a bit of a learning curve because i'm teach myself to sew now as well uh, so that's one fabric style I've got little knitty sheep as well these are only available in small because I didn't order myself enough fabric to make any more um, I have got these nice lilac leaf botanically ones uh, in large and small I've got some, uh, I think they're called alicorns. They're like Pegasus unicorn mixes. I think that's probably my favourite fabric of all of them. Uh, and then I have these sort of bell jar birds as well, which I think are just gorgeous. And that's all my project bags as well. So they all come in large and small other than the knitting sheet. Um, there's only one of each size at the moment because I didn't order enough fabric so I wasn't sure whether or not they'd sell so depending on the popularity of them I probably might not be making them again I don't know if they sell really well then I will make more if I'm stuck with them for months then I'm just gonna keep them myself because I really like the fabric uh, so yeah that's all the shop update stuff i'm sure there's some other things but i can't remember what they are i really need to make notes for my next podcast because this up here doesn't quite work in front of a camera remember that for next time future stuff i'm coming towards the end of what i have to say and i really need a cup of coffee now so i'm gonna gonna leave you guys uh so I hope you guys have a really good day and uh, make good choices and thanks for watching. Bye guys! I am unsure how to end this podcast. Skills. <laughs>